Uh, this message this morning is probably one of the most important messages that I could share with you. Um, Jesus' message about fishing for people and making disciples is probably one of his most important messages that he's ever taught about or ever preached. And I'm concerned that as a pastor, I could be more excited about sharing this message um, than actually making disciples myself. So that I can't just point the way and say, this is what we're supposed to do, but I've got to actually lead the way. And so this has been very convicting for me this week as I think about how is it that God's calling me to intentionally make a disciple or make disciples. Jesus said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And in fact, if we're not actually doing that as a church, then we've got to ask ourselves what we're doing because Jesus said, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. So that if we're not actually fishing for people and making disciples, then we're not actually fulfilling our mission as the church. And we have to ask ourselves on an individual level that if we are not ourselves in the process of or praying about or actually making a disciple or fishing for people, then we've got to ask ourselves who we claim to be following because it's not Jesus. Because Jesus said, follow me and I will make you a fisher of men. In other words, you follow Jesus, he will make you to fish for people. So that's automatic. So Jesus is really talking about discipleship. And discipleship maybe is just a fancy word that means a follower or a, a learner is a disciple. And I think a simple definition is basically... Um, becoming more like Jesus, learning about and becoming more like Jesus, and then inviting somebody else to do the same. Almost like a mentor relationship that you are constantly looking about and, and learning about and becoming more like Jesus, and then you have somebody that you're also investing in so that they would become more like Jesus. That's discipleship. If you remember back, I think it's the spring now, that we had those surveys about followers of Jesus. I don't know if you remember that, but as a, as a session, we wanted to know, what does it look like to become a mature follower of Jesus? What does a disciple look like? And here's some of the things that, that we, this is not the be-all, end-all, but these are some basic things that a follower of Jesus ought to be about. A follower of Jesus ought to serve their local church with their time, talent, resources. Okay, so that's Harlemsburg. You'd be praying for our church. You, we'd love to worship with you together. You're serving. You're using the gifts God's given you. You're using your money to support the mission of the church of making disciples. Okay? A disciple is somebody who prays consistently. A disciple is somebody who is constantly and daily in the Word of God. A disciple is somebody who's not a lone ranger Christian, but they do this stuff together. So you might be meeting in like a small group, like the choir or the praise team or a book club or a new members class or a Bible study, Sunday school. You're getting together with a group of people that you help build one another up in the faith. A disciple is somebody who is actively participating, either volunteering or praying about or giving money towards your local missional outreach. In other words, you look around your community and you say, I've got to, I've got to serve art in my community. Whether that's Laurel Hope or a deacon or crisis shelter, the rescue mission, the local schools, whatever, a disciple is engaged in his community, his or her community. And a follower of Jesus is also not just concerned about a 20 mile radius, but we're concerned about people all across the world. So we're praying about people in Syria. We're supporting missionaries like Stephanie Varensky. We are praying about and supporting the mission to Sudan that this presbytery has. Okay, that's not the be-all, end-all, but that's kind of the goal. That's what a disciple is supposed to look like. And I think that part of our problem is we've never actually had a really good example of what this looks like ourselves. Like a lot of us probably didn't have somebody to mentor us in the faith. And actually, you know, if you don't mind, how many of you would say you had somebody 
who discipled you intentionally or, you, or mentored you at some point. Can any of you say that? Some of us, and that's, that's awesome. And yet those of us who haven't had that mentor relationship, that doesn't necessarily give us an excuse, unfortunately. Um, because, for example, say you didn't have a good father growing up. That doesn't then give you license not to be a good father yourself. But Jesus is calling us to intentionally pursue these kind of relationships. And um, I was fortunate um, that I had a couple examples of this in my own life. When I was in high school, I was in youth group. And um, we just hang out together as a youth group. And we had a youth pastor, uh, Paul Martin. And Paul approached me and asked if I would want to consistently meet together for breakfast just to kind of chat and to learn about what it looks like to follow Jesus. And so I was a senior. I wasn't a morning person when I was a senior, and I'm not a morning person now. But he wanted to meet at 6.30 in the morning um, at Panera Bread, and so that's what we did. We'd meet for about an hour or so. We'd just have breakfast, we'd chat, we'd hang out. Sometimes we'd read some scripture. Sometimes we'd pray. Um, I spent a lot of time asking him some tough questions. Sometimes we talk about girls, sometimes Susan. Um, but that was all, you know, between the guys. Uh, but it was just hanging out. It was just, he was intentional about saying, let's meet together. Let's look together. Let's encourage one another in what it looks like to follow Jesus. And that was really important to me. And, and really what it is is just starting with a relationship. And so I want us to think about, very practically speaking, because on the one hand we say, okay, we're supposed to fish for people. Ah. We're supposed to make disciples. Ah. But what does this look like in practice? And I've given you a handout, um, and that's really just as a resource. And hopefully as you go home today or in the next week, you might look at that and just think about, God, how are you calling me to make a disciple or to fish for people? And so I think Jesus has the best model. And that's what I just want to look at really quickly this morning. Um, the first thing about becoming a disciple and actually making disciples is becoming a disciple ourselves. And last week we looked at how exactly you do that. And very simply, it's to repent and believe the good news. It's to say, God, I realize that you're a holy God and I have fallen short of your glory. God, would you forgive me? Would you please forgive me for all of my sins? And then I trust what you did for me, that you, Jesus, died on the cross where I should have died. You, you lived the life I should have lived. You died the death that I deserved. And then you rose and defeated it all. And you've made a way. You've forgiven me. So, Lord, I trust in you. I, I hold tight to you. That's, that's how you first become a disciple, is you live a lifestyle of repentance and trusting in the good news of Jesus. That's step number one. But I think the next step is that you and I have to remain prayerful. You say, okay, God, I have no idea what I'm doing. But I know you called me to be a disciple and to make disciples. So, God, would you please help me to be a disciple myself? Would you help me to do some of those things we just talked about? Lord, I need help. And how can I possibly give away something that I'm not? How can I teach somebody else to follow Jesus when I'm not necessarily following Jesus 100% myself? So God, would you please help me to be the kind of disciple that you're calling me to be? And by the way, becoming a disciple and discipling somebody else is not something that we can ever check off our list. Like it's, okay, I gave a little bit of money to Harlingsburg. I was praying about the Sudan missionaries. I read my Bible this week. Um, X, Y, and Z, so now I can check that off and I become a full-fledged disciple. And I've made one disciple, so I'm done. We're never done with this process. We're never done looking more like Jesus. And we're never done fishing for people and making disciples. So we've got to be prayerful about it. And then here, I think, is the most important key of all. You and I don't go fishing alone. Now, I know sometimes fishing is really relaxing, and you might really enjoy fishing alone, but you and I don't go fishing alone. 
We've got more than a fishing buddy. We've got the one who said, I will be with you even till the end of the age. Jesus says, as you are a disciple, and as you seek to make a disciple, I will be with you. In fact, I will live inside of you as you make disciples. So sometimes this is really scary. It's like, God, I have no idea what I'm doing, but I know that I've got my fishing boat. And I know he said he'll never leave me, and he will be with me. That's why the Holy Spirit was poured out, so that we would make disciples. And then I think very practically, we have got to ask ourselves and ask God, God, is there someone that you're calling me to invest in and potentially begin a relationship with so that I can make a disciple? And so I'm at, I'd ask you to, to think about that right now. Is there someone that I already have a relationship with that God is calling me to potentially invest in, to hang out with, to eventually be intentional about making disciples? And so you, we actually need to pray about that. And I'd ask you might even think about that this day and this week. And if there's no one that God's bringing to mind, then that means maybe we ought to just start hanging out with people who don't believe in Jesus. Because you eventually want to make it intentional and meet people where they are. Remember Jesus when he said, follow me? The people that he initially said to follow me were fishermen. So he spoke their language. He said, look, I want you to follow me and I'll make you fish for people. Now that sounds a little strange, but no, Jesus is using the kind of language that they're familiar with. And so you and I have got to do the same thing. So maybe you, you go golfing with a person. Maybe you just hang out with them. Maybe you invite them to dinner. Maybe you go shopping together. You just you do the kind of things that they are already doing. You hang out with them. You, you build a relationship. And then as you build that relationship, eventually you have to make it intentional. And you might say, would you like to start meeting on a regular basis where we can just kind of talk about our faith? We can share our faith together. We can encourage one another. But it needs to be intentional that you say, I want to invite you to do this with me. You know, for me, that was, can you meet at Panera Bread at 6.30 every week? Uh, maybe for you, it's let's meet, let's meet every other week. I'll invite you over to my house. Let's, uh, let's go to a restaurant. Let's have coffee. Let's just hang. Where, whatever it is, you need to be intentional about saying, okay, let's do this together and let's be intentional. And as we meet together, maybe you'll pray together with them. Maybe you'll just hang out for a little bit and, and talk about difficulties that you're having in the faith. Maybe you will go through a gospel like the book of Mark. Maybe you'll, you'll start with a little bit of a Bible study. And maybe you say, okay, Brady, this is all well and good, but I have no idea what we would talk about. I, I have no, I feel like I'm way out in left field. <clears throat> if you come to that point, there's an excellent free resource for just this exact very thing. It's called Multiply Movement. Um, it's a free resource online, and essentially it's something that you and the person whom you're discipling can go through together. It's kind of like showing one another what it looks like to follow Jesus. It has some scripture in there. It has some questions that you can ask one another if you're really stuck. Um, so this, I highly, highly recommend that resource um, as you think about that. And as you do that, as you're meeting with someone, and as you're investing in them, and as you're praying for them, you're in the process of mentoring them, then you want to have that person do the exact same thing. You want them to then begin to invest in somebody else and make a disciple in somebody else. And then that movement will literally multiply. I want us just to think for a minute of how incredible of an impact that that can make. Let's say that you, for one year, invested in one disciple, making one disciple. And then that person invested in making one disciple. And that process continued for 20 years. Do you know that if you invested in one disciple and you had that person invest in just one disciple, in 20 years' time, do you know how many people would be a full-fledged disciple in the kingdom of Jesus just on one, your obedience alone? Over one million people 
If you just multiply by two, then multiply that by two, then multiply that by two, in 20 years, one over one million people would become a kingdom disciple. And then if you multiply that by 60 of us in here, in 20 years' time, over almost 63 million people would be a follower of Jesus. Now that's incredible to me. That if all of us took one simple step to invest in the life of another person, and then that person invested in the life of another person, do you see how this thing can just explode? And all it takes is just intentionally discipling someone. That to me is incredible. And I hope that that figure stops you in your tracks when you realize how important it is just to invest in the life of one other person for the sake of the kingdom. And again, if you're like me, we've got a lot of excuses like, well, I don't know enough. Well, that's why we're in this thing together. You don't, you don't fish alone. Jesus is with you. But we're with you, hopefully. We've got to build one another up. We've got to be in the Word ourselves. We've got to be praying. This multiplying movement is a great resource. And by the way, if you know Jesus, that's enough. If you have a story, that's enough. So we can't use that as an, as an excuse. But the other big excuse is, well, I don't have time. I've got way too many things on my plate. I am too busy to invest in a couple of times a month meeting with someone for an hour. Brady, you're a pastor. You're supposed to be making disciples, okay? But I am really busy right now. Well, unfortunately, Jesus says that doesn't cut it either. Because your first calling has to be a disciple and making disciples. Jesus doesn't say, follow me and make disciples and fish for people unless you are too busy. <laughs> Jesus doesn't give us that out. He says, follow me. And in fact, he says that you better make this a priority. Because when Jesus said, follow me to Andrew and James and John and Simon, the Bible says immediately they dropped their nets and they followed him. Now, this is one of those things we can't put off till tomorrow if we think about it or feel like it or next week. Jesus says immediately. He's looking for immediate obedience for the kingdom of God. Immediate disciple making for the kingdom of God. And so I just want to leave you with a couple questions. And I want you to realize a really important thing is we're the ones that go fishing. Okay? Hopefully God uses us to help do the catching. But God is the only one who cleans them. God is the only one who can change hearts and change lives and encourage them to make a disciple. We are just in the business of going fishing. But it's a really awesome business and it's one that Jesus says we don't do alone. The Bible says some people plant and some people water. But it's God who makes them grow. It's God who makes them grow. Somebody asked me this question in April, and I've never stopped thinking about it, and I want to ask you this, and I want to challenge you with this question. Is your fruit growing on other people's trees? In other words, have you invested in somebody that that's rubbing off on somebody else? Jesus said, the student is not above the teacher, but everyone who is fully trained will be like their teacher. And that is what God is calling everybody, every one of us to. To fully train and bring up a disciple so that they will do the same thing. And you see how that process can just absolutely explode. So I just want you to get really honest with yourself and before God today. And ask yourself, are you willing to commit to investing in people around you? And again, there's no cookie cutter model. You know, for some of us, that means just hanging out at, at Starbucks or, or just hanging out in Newcastle or inviting them to dinner. But are you willing, at least, if God would bring some people to mind, are you willing to invest in the life of just one person? Because remember, that's how Jesus did it. He had a really big ministry and teaching ministry, but he invested in 12. And then he had three really good friends in that 12. That's, where, that's, where the, that's why you and I are where we are today. Did you know that? 
Because Jesus invested in 12 people and then they invested in other people and somewhere along the line, by the grace of God, you and I got picked up. Thanks be to God. And then ask yourself, what excuses keep you from investing or discipling people around you? Is it, I don't know enough? Is it, I'm too busy? What excuses are you giving yourself for God today? And then pray about how you can move past those excuses. And again, ask God. Ask yourself and ask God, God, who are you putting in my life right now that I can begin to intentionally begin to make a disciple? And again, this has to be our priority as a church. It has to be my priority as a pastor. If you're convicted and you're like, God, I, I think you're calling me to do this, but I'm not sure where to go, please come and see me. I want to pray with you. I want to brainstorm with you. I've got to be, a, be, be about making a disciple, and I've got to be about encouraging and teaching and helping you all make disciples with the peoples around us. So let's remember Jesus said, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Let's pray.